News coming to you live from Seoul. I'm Kwon jang -ho, and it's good to have you with us. The trade war between U.S. and China continues to escalate, with the Trump administration threatening to add $200 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese imports. That, of course, comes on top of the $34 billion tariff plan that came to force just last week. China has said it has no choice but to fight back with tit-for-tat type measures. The question is, where does it all end? Meanwhile, South Korea will be doing everything it can to make sure its economy doesn't become collateral damage in this battle between its two biggest trade partners. We'll delve deeper into these issues with an expert in the studio later. But first, our Devin Whiting at our news centre will start us off with the latest headlines at this hour. Over to you, Devin. Hi, Jang Ho. Yeah, South Korean President Moon Jae-in kicked off his first full day in Singapore on this Thursday. He received an official welcome from President Halima Yaakob at the presidential palace as he began his state visit. Our chief Blue House correspondent, Moon Kan Young, joins us live from Singapore. Kan Young, what can you tell us? Well, Devin, um, like you said, after receiving an official welcome at the Astana, welcome by and guard of honor as well, um, President Moon held a bilateral summit with the Prime Minister of Singapore, Lee Shen Lung. The two leaders agreed to further strengthen the country's economic and diplomatic cooperation while also working to promote free trade and peace in their region. South Korea and um, Singapore now during uh, their bilateral uh, summit one on one, which was followed by a joint news conference, the two leaders agreed to further, uh, first extend the country's exchange of people, which came to roughly 850,000 in 2017. The two nations will also expand a trade which stands at around 20 billion U.S. dollars and further encourage investment by quickly concluding talks and revising the double taxation agreement. Now, they're also seeking new business opportunities in building new smart cities in other nations, including the nine other members of the ASEAN. Singapore, of course, is a chair of the ASEAN this year. The two leaders also witnessed the exchange of several memoranda of understanding to boost cooperation in the areas of trade, environment, small and medium enterprises, and startups. Devin. Okay, so they've covered quite a lot already. Did they also discuss security-related issues? I'm sure also dominating the Moon Lee Summit was the latest developments on the Korean Peninsula as the two leaders discussed ways to peacefully denuclearize North Korea as the meeting also, of course, comes on the heels of a historic summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and the U.S. President Donald Trump here in Singapore on June 12th. We have been following events with close attention, of course, some of them happened in Singapore. But we wish you all the best in developing stability and prosperity and denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, the details of those talks haven't yet been released just yet, but we will have more updates for you in a later newscast. Devin. All right. Moon Gan Yang on the ground there in Singapore. Thank you for that. Now, President Moon Jae-in says his administration's goal is to declare an official end to the Korean War by the end of this year. It was 65 years ago when the combatants signed an armistice, so the conflict has until now never officially ended. In an interview Wednesday with the Singapore Daily, The Straits Times, President Moon said he'll closely consult with North Korea and the U.S. regarding the timing and formalities. He said it'll be a significant move in ending hostilities between the two Koreas in line with the terms laid out in the Panmunjom Declaration. He said there have been many improvements in inter-Korean relations this year that would have been unthinkable in the past, and now is the time to seize the momentum to establish peace and co-prosperity through the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. President Moon said he firmly believes the window of opportunity for reunification will open as inter-Korean relations gradually improve. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has once again said that getting North Korea to dismantle its nuclear and missile programs will be a decades-long challenge. According to CNN, that's what Pompeo told reporters upon his arrival in Belgium for the NATO summit on Wednesday, that getting the North to make the fundamental strategic decision that its nuclear weapons are actually a threat to the regime itself will be a long process. He was addressing the criticism that his most recent visit to Pyongyang accomplished little or nothing. He said the same thing on Monday when he was in Afghanistan, adding that expecting to change North Korea's mind in a matter of hours would be ludicrous. 
Officials from North Korea and the U.S. were set to meet again today at the inter-Korean border to talk about Pyongyang's promise to return the remains of American soldiers who were killed in action in the North during the Korean War. No word yet on when those talks started or what was said, but with the U.S. having sent 100 caskets to Panmunjom to hold the remains when they're sent over, the two sides are expected to discuss when and how the transfer will happen. Once the two sides agree on a date, the remains will be taken by U.S. forces to Osan Air Base in South Korea. They'll then be sent to either Hawaii or Nebraska for identification. South Korea's jobs growth is at its lowest in a decade. The nation's top economic policymakers met today to look at possible reasons why and how to turn things around. They also said they'll be closely watching the escalating trade war between the U.S. and China. Our Won Jung Hwan has this report. South Korea's finance minister Kim dong yeon and the heads of ministries related to the economy have gathered together to discuss the urgent economic issues impacting the country. They started off with the recent jobs report, which was released on Wednesday. The latest job figures by Statistics Korea showed the country only saw its job growth remain in the 100,000 level in June, the fifth straight months it has been in that range. While confronting the issue of job creation, Kim drew up a set of measures to boost domestic demand during the second half of the year to help create more jobs in the country. Job creation numbers are not good, and the employment situation is the worst since the financial crisis. Since the sluggish employment is closely related to our everyday lives, the figures are really depressing. The situation is not likely to improve in a short amount of time, so the creation of new jobs should be led by innovative growth. During this meeting, the minister brought up the matter of the hike in the country's legal minimum wage. Kim mentioned the possibility that raising the minimum wage had a serious impact on the job front. He said there is a need to be more flexible regarding raising the minimum wage in the future. The minimum wage is expected to reach nearly 9 US dollars per hour, by 2020. Another critical issue that was discussed during the meeting today was the escalating trade war between the United States and China. The government is worried because the growing trade spat between the world's two superpowers could wreak havoc on Korean exporters as the U.S. and China are Korea's top two export markets. Won Jong-an, Arirang News. Meanwhile, Korea's central bank has decided to keep its key interest rate steady at 1.5%, despite the U.S. now tightening its own policy rate in earnest. Inflation is still a little too low, and there are other risks like the U.S.-China trade conflict. Kim Hye-sung reports. The Bank of Korea kept its inflation rate projection at 1.6 percent but cut its growth forecast for the local economy to 2.9 percent from April's 3 percent. We expect economic growth to continue at the level of its potential growth rate. But there is growing uncertainty over global trade conflict and the pace of monetary policy normalization by major economies. The BOK chief said Korea's exports remain robust and that growing consumption will offset slowing investment in the country. But the bank said growing trade uncertainties and the escalating trade friction between the U.S. and China poses a risk to the South Korean economy and the financial market. With inflation also below its 2 percent target, the BOK left its key benchmark rate unchanged at 1.5 percent. South Korea's consumer price index gained 1.5 percent in June, the same as the previous month due to a fall in agricultural goods prices. Household debt concerns and the sluggish domestic labor market also led the bank to hold its key rate. The number of newly added jobs in the country remained in the 100,000 range for the fifth consecutive month in June. Between January and June, a monthly average of 142,000 new jobs were added, marking the slowest growth since the 2008 global financial crisis. July's monetary decision leaves the U.S. interest rate 0.5 percent higher than that of Korea. But with the Fed expected to raise rates two more times this year, the BOK didn't rule out the possibility of a rate hike in the second half of this year to curb possible capital outflows, adding that it will closely monitor global market conditions and how the U.S.-China trade war affects the Korean economy when setting its monetary policies. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting, and those are your news headlines at this hour.
The escalating U.S.-China trade war has now spilled over into the World Trade Organization as well. With neither side apparently willing to back down, it looks like tensions between the two world superpowers are going to rise even further. Uh, Kim mo has more. At a meeting of WTO members on Wednesday, the United States said China's membership should be reconsidered, claiming Beijing has been using its position within the WTO to take advantage of other nations. Washington's ambassador to the WTO, Dennis Shia, accused China of failing to fully embrace the open, market-oriented policies on which the organization is founded, stressing that this should be addressed for the WTO to remain relevant to the international trading system. Firing back, China defended its record, pointing out how it has significantly lowered import tariffs. China's vice commerce minister then took indirect aim at the Trump administration, urging the WTO to stand up to protectionism. The multilateral trading system is now confronted with severe challenges. We would like to call on all WTO members to resolutely defend the fundamental principles and the core values of the multilateral trading system and to firmly stand up to trade bully, protectionism and unilateralism. The latest standoff came shortly after the Trump administration raised the stakes in its trade dispute with Beijing on Wednesday, threatening 10 percent tariffs on 200 billion U.S. dollars of Chinese goods in response to China's imposition of tit-for-tat tariffs of 25 percent on 34 billion dollars worth of U.S. exports last Friday. Those tariffs came a matter of hours after President Trump announced the U.S. was imposing its first round of 25 percent tariffs on $34 billion of Chinese imports. Kim mo Arirang News. To walk us through the impact of these escalating trade war and its potential effect on South Korea, we have with us Professor Shin sang yeop from Kyung University. Thank you for coming in today, Professor. Pleased to be here today. The trade war has officially started, it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. and China have both imposed uh, tariffs, billions of dollars worth of tariffs on each other. And the U.S. has now announced that they're planning 200 billion do uh, more worth of tariffs mm -hmm. in the coming months. And China <clears throat> have said they have no choice but to retaliate. Where do things go from here then? Well, I think the, um, uh, the trade war um, would continue for a while mm. because, uh, you know, our uh, we have to think about what is the real reasons why USA started trade war uh, against China. When somebody said that, yeah, this is only because of the uh, trade and economy reasons. But some others said that, no, there must be some political reasons as well. And you know, uh, the China and USA has been uh, in a competitive position in taking the hegemony power not only in the Asia-Pacific region but also in the global market, global uh, the arena. Mm. So somebody said that you know, the USA will continue to take some protectionist uh, measures, such as they are going to impose more additional tariffs on cars, and uh, another one is that they may be, pro, I mean, prevent the Chinese investment, I mean, China from making more investment in the USA. Well, certainly these things seem to be very uh, uh, I mean, painful for the Chinese government and Chinese economy itself. Why? Because, you know, China uh, the achieved a very remarkable economic growth rate over the last several decades. Right now, it became the second largest economy in the world. And then on the part of USA, I think they, they do not lose their status as number one economy in the world uh, by preventing China from becoming a more powerful the economies in the world. So, I mean, the real reason why I'm, what I'm thinking is that USA has some political considerations as well. So for a time being, the USA will take the, a series of the I mean, protectionist measures against China. And then as we saw already, the China will take retaliatory action. So there must be some escalation of I mean, competition. I mean, retaliatory, retaliatory actions taken by USA and China against each other. So that's the reason why I think that for a time being, the, uh, this kind of the situation will continue. Um, if, if we buy the idea that USA will limit their, uh, I mean, their actions and policies to trade conflicts uh, with the China, that means that 
China will make some, some way to uh, solve this problem. For example, you know, the legal basis of the uh, protectionist uh, policy taken by USA government is Super 301 of the Trade Expansion Act. Uh, if you look at the article itself, that means that because of unfair trading practices, the USA government is taking the protectionist measures against Chinese, uh, the China. Mm. Then, if China can just accept the those kind of the uh, I mean, asking from the USA government, they can uh, change their the policy, which uh, persuade the USA to have their Chinese government has making every effort to uh, solve the unfairness in the trade with the USA. Then both sides will have some excuse to change their policies. That means that can be the way to solve the current trade wars. But as I already explained before, if USA has another consideration that, that I mean, for a time being, the USA will take the protectionist measures against China, and then China will take the retaliatory action against the USA continuously. So that is the reason why, for a time being, there will be the trade war uh, in between two countries. The impact of the trade war, there's some question marks about it. For example, uh, the US and Trump has been <clears throat> touting protectionist policies since the beginning of his term. But the US economy still seems to be doing quite well, <clears throat> um, especially as Trump says, he keeps pointing out the stock market saying, right. isn't this brilliant, isn't it record high numbers, that kind mm. of stuff. Do we imagine it's going to stay that way for um, the second half of the year, or do you think the trade war will start to bite at some point? Well, actually, we cannot think the American economy is separate from global economy, mm. right? Well, global economy has enjoyed, uh, I mean, quite, uh, I mean, the uh, good economic circumstances over the last, uh, I mean, the for time being. Uh, for 17 months, they, uh, I mean, since the early 2016, mm. the global economy has been in a good shape. Mm. But the, uh, of course, the first half of 2018, it was a good start for the global economy. But uh, I mean, if I give you a figure, the January, the global economy achieved about 5.6% growth, even though the, uh, uh, the uh, March, it dropped about the 0.8% uh, growth, but in return, I mean, they achieved the about 4.3% 4 economic growth in April. So to make a long story short, in the beginning of the uh, 2018, the global economy was very good. But by taking the protectionist measures, I mean, USA, I mean, I mean, the Chinese government uh, has taken retaliatory action. There are two uh, major economies in the world. And the third one, European Union even themselves, I mean, they also uh, changed their trade policy, which is more protectionistic uh, measures. Mm -hmm. Then global economic, I mean, trading circumstances return to the protectionistic circumstances that is that will not good for the U.S. economy as well, because mm -hmm. Even though USA does not rely on the trade as much as other countries, but without trade with other countries, USA economy cannot take, I mean, keep their dynamism in, mm. in, in it. Mm. So, I mean, if the situation goes on for a while, then USA economy will face also challenges like the other countries. Let's briefly talk about the WTO issue, as mm -hmm. you saw in that report earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the US representative has said, it will be the reckoning point of China now and its membership in the organization and that China's trade practices need to be addressed somehow either within the organization or without. But one of the interesting points that the US talked about was the fact that actually the WTO cannot handle such a big issue. Right, right. Does Washington have a point there? Mm -hmm. I think, well, the two countries are right now playing the game. You know, I think uh, the real reason, I mean, uh, is uh, not, not related to uh, the uh, uh, the uh, I mean two countries uh, explanation I mean it can be acceptable of course China ha does not have the uh, market oriented economy yes it is true but the USA also uh, has taken the very protectionist measures based on Super 301 mm -hmm. Article 301 of the Trade Expansion Act of the USA government. The, that is also a violation. It cannot be accepted by the old WTO member countries because I mean, they do not agree with the unfairness of the trade. That is the perception of the USA government. So, I mean, there are some rooms to be uh, misunderstood by the other member countries. Other countries can interpret those kind of things differently. So I said that they are playing the game. So what I'm thinking is that, you know, uh, I want to empathize the one of the limits which WTO system has. 
when the uh, uh, big member countries of WTO violate the principles of the WTO, the WTO does not have any ways to pen I mean, punish them. Mm. That is one of the limits of WTO system. Mm. But another thing which I want to underline is that we have a very um, and, uh, valuable lessons from the World War II when we did, I mean, we did not have WTO system. At the time, each member countries, I mean, each country sought for their own national interests, even though they could, what, would, what could happen if they stick to the, their uh, economic policy. But we have the uh, WTO system. That means that we can meet together, we can share the opinions on the economic policies of member countries together. They can have a power, I mean, ability to stop some member country uh, to take their own uh, e the economic policy to maximize their national interests interest, which can be a very direct threat to the global trading system. So WTO system, system could be maintained, even though it has some limits in it. So I think we have to understand the uh, argument between two governments in this way. Let's quickly move on to the South Korea perspective of all this. Mm -hmm. The US and China are South Korea's two biggest trade right. partners. Mm -hmm. What does South Korea need to be wary of now? Well, actually, uh, on the top of the protectionist measures taken by the USA government and Chinese government, another of uh, the uh, problem we have, difficulty we have, is that European Union, which is the also very important trading partner for us, also taking the very, very protectionistic uh, measures, trade policies against the uh, Korea. So we are in a very difficult situation. Uh, but uh, I think I want to emphasize the diversification of trading partners. Very recently, President Moon Jae-in paid his official visit to India, and he emphasized that India will be one of, one of the more important trading partners for Korea. That, I mean, this is one of the ways we have to take the, uh, um, for the future economic prosperity. That means diversification of the Korean trading partners seems to be one of the solutions to the economic difficulties facing, facing us. But on the short term basis, I think the, you know, by taking the, uh, I mean, from the very protectionistic trading environments, we have to, uh, I mean, seek for the, some items of products which can have competitive advantages. What I mean is that if the USA government impose the high tariffs on the Chinese products, then we can replace the, uh, the products with our products. I mean, that means that if we have the good quality and price competitiveness, we can enter into the USA market, replacing the Chinese the market share in the USA market. Let's look at some uh, figures that came out mm -hmm. today as well. Mm -hmm. The Bank of Korea revised down its growth forecast for the year from 3% to 2.9%. Korean exports this year have been good, but it seems the numbers are being dragged down by the job market and investments in the country. Right. Mm -hmm. Is this forecast uh, little, perhaps a little bit worrying for the future? I think so. It's quite worrying because, you know, all economic indicators, I mean, I mean uh, uh, is looking bad right now. Uh, the employment rate and even exports, we are, I mean, Korea is heavily rely on exports. The, uh, our uh, exports uh, started to show uh, the uh, signals of the weakening. Mm. Uh, over the last uh, several months, Korea has, I mean, uh, the most specifically 17 months straight, the Korea has achieved the economic I mean, increase of exports. Mm. But the, uh, very recently, the Korean exports started to be slowed down. So mm. this is one of the concerns we have. Mm. Another one is that, you know, the number of the, uh, the jobs. On average basis, uh, the every month, about 172,000 jobs was, uh, were offered. But this is the half of the, uh, uh, the same period of last month, last year. Mm. So the uh, unemployment, uh, un unemployment rate is expected to increase. Mm. So all these uh, major economic indicators uh, says to us, I mean, said to us that Korean economy is right now shaking, weakening. So I think our, in the second half, the Korean economy will face more I mean, challenges. Uh, because that not only because of the domestic uh, the economic situations but also the external economic circumstances which can be represented by the trade war between USA and China so I think the uh, Korean economy will have uh, the tougher period I mean uh, strong challenges in the second half of 2018 I think and briefly, before we go, let's talk about what President Moon can do. Mm -hmm. uh, President Moon Jae-in, one of his key agendas was called uh, was uh, income-led growth. That's mm -hmm. what he called it. Mm -hmm. But so far, there seems to be little impact that seems to be making. 
How do you think this will progress in the second year in office now? Well, like the coins, which has two sides, you know. Uh, I think the uh, uh, income-led economic growth and the uh, uh, is one side. But as you pointed out, I think uh, many many economists said that it does not work. It, it is not working at the moment. So uh, right now, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the group of economists empathize for sustainable economic growth. Corporate investment is vital. You know, the, uh, so the, the government should have to uh, uh, promote uh, the uh, more, I mean, the big companies to increase their investment by how? By deregulation. I think the uh, deregulation is the, uh, uh, the way to support innovative uh, uh, the, uh, growth uh, systematically in Korea. So I think the very recently, uh, the President Moon, uh, when, uh, while during his state visit to India, he met uh, the Samsung Electronics leader, E. J. Yong. I think this is one of, one of the ways to, uh, I mean, to uh, encourage the, uh, the uh, businessmen, in Korean businessmen, to uh, change their uh, I guess strategies. That means increase their investment. Uh, I think the, uh, our, uh, for the time being, the government will take the uh, both strategies at the same time. But depending on the responses from the market, the government will uh, respond more to the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the business circle demanding uh, strategies. That means that the government will take the deregulation more the, uh, actively in order to increase the, um, uh, draw the more direct investment from the uh, corporate in Korea, I think. We'll have to end it there. Thank you for making the time to come in today and sharing your insights with us. My pleasure. Now that's it from us here at Arirang News, but do tune in throughout the day for our later newscasts for, and for the latest updates. Thank you for watching and hope you join us again next time. Goodbye.